Hi, my name is Dave Bodie for Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to record and program your own high impact samples for use in music composition and sound design. In the last DIY sample tutorial that I created, I used a free sample player, but in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to program the samples in Native Instruments Contact. Now, the first part in this process is going to be to record some samples, and there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this. I'm going to go with something really simple, a single large diaphragm condenser microphone and a portable recorder. Let me show you how I have it set up. So my setup is pretty simple here. I have a table, I have a little non-skid shelf liner on here. My microphone is an AKG C3000B and my recorder is a Tascam DR100. So I like to make sure that the levels are in check. I like to record things pretty hot, but I don't want them clipping obviously. So when I'm recording, I like to record just a little bit more than I think that I'll need. So if I'm going for five round robin variations, what I like to do is record maybe seven hits and that way I'll have a few options if I goof up one of the hits. Then I like to record a few different velocity layers so I have some dynamic variation as well. And I basically try to do this per instrument so it doesn't always work to record four velocity layers for the particular instrument so I may only record three and some I can get away with perhaps a little bit more. I like to keep things pretty standard though if I'm recording a bunch of different things because it makes editing and organizing the samples a lot easier. So you can see I'm just going through some of the velocity layers here. And you can see I like to give a little pause at the end of each stroke to make sure that the vibrations of whatever it is that I'm hitting here completely dies out before I hit the instrument again. And so really quick, I'll just show you some of the other things that I recorded. I'm not going to show you all of the hits, but just to give you an idea of the types of things that I grabbed to try and record. So now that the samples have been recorded, the next step is going to be to edit them down and get them ready for contact. So I'm here in Reaper and I'm just going to import my recording. And I'm going to turn off grid lines and metronome. And as you can see, this is a stereo recording. So it's two channels and one of the channels doesn't have anything on it. So to start, I'm going to right click, go to item processing and explode multi-channel items. And this is going to take this stereo track and it's going to make one mono track with the information that I want and another mono track with the blank information, which I'm just going to delete. There. So I deleted that and now I just have this one track, which is the thing that I want. So as you can see, this is a pretty long recording. It's about 58 minutes long. And I'm not going to show you how to slice every single one of these samples up. I'm just going to show you the general idea. And then you're going to be able to figure it out from there. So you can see if you look at these samples here, there's a couple here in the beginning that I was testing out levels. And then you can see some groups of velocities here. You can see some louder stuff, some medium, some softer, some softer, and then really soft stuff down here. And that's how I'm going to organize these in terms of velocity layers, which will give me a range of dynamics. There's also multiple variations of each hit, and that's going to give me some round robin options in contact, which means when I play the same sample over and over, I'm not going to get the same recording over and over and over. I'm going to get the same type of hit at the same velocity layer, but it's going to give me a different variation each time, which is going to add to the realism. 
So to make that happen, what I need to do is set up some regions, which is going to make it a lot easier when I go to render this out. So what I want to do is go over here to one of these samples. And I want to find the start point to a hit. And I'm just going to make a little time selection here. And I don't really want these regions to be any longer than they need to be. So I want to hear the entire decay of this hit and make sure that I'm not cutting anything out prematurely. So that looks pretty good for these initial hits. Usually the louder hits are going to have the most decay. So I'm going to start there. Now that I have this time selection, I'm just going to scooch this media item out of the way. And I'm going to hit Shift R on my keyboard, and that's going to create a new region up here. Now I can take this region, I'm just going to slide it to the beginning. And then I'm going to make four more copies by control clicking and dragging. And these are going to represent my five round robins that I'm going to be working with here. So now I can find one of these samples to start with. And I'm going to start putting them in these regions here. So I'm just going to really quickly roughly line these up, come to the end of the region and I'm going to split it, which is S on the keyboard. Then I'll just trim it up to the next region. And then I'm going to hold down alt and click and drag. And that's going to slide the media item inside the bounds of the in and out point. So it's not going to move the clip. It's just going to slide the contents and it's not going to change the in and the out point. So I'm just going to generally line these up here. This next sample looks like it clips. So I'm just going to slide these down. And there's some nice ones right here. I'm going to use these guys. So these are going to be my loudest samples for this initial articulation. And now what I can do is come in here. I'm going to zoom way up. And I'm going to slide these so they start right at the very start of the region. So that when I play these back, there's not going to be any delay when I hit a key. All right, so this is my very first group. So let me play it down for you so you can hear what it sounds like. Now I'm going to drag this down and create another track here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the next group of velocity layers, which are these guys right here. So I'm going to pull these over. Just kind of generally line them up. And then I'll move on to the next group here. And I'll go back and line all of them up in a second. And then these last guys here. Now I'm going to uh, just solo up the second to loudest velocity layer and make sure these all sound pretty consistent. Great. So now I'm going to line these up. Now I'll jump down here to make sure these all sound consistent. Great. Those sound very good. And I'll just line these up just like I did before. And then I'll come down here to the last group here. And those all sound very, very nice. So I'm going to line all of these up. So now my samples are all lined up. And the next thing that I want to do is name these individual tracks, I'm just going to name all the tracks to the velocity layers that I want contact to sort for me. Contact has an auto mapping feature, which is something that we're going to go over and naming these like this will really help. So this is going to be zero underscore 31. This is going to be 32 to 63. This is 64 to 95. And this is 96. To 127. Then I'm going to jump up here to view and then region marker manager. 
and I'm going to name my regions round robin one, round robin two, round robin three, round robin four, and round robin five. The last step is I want to grab all the samples in a round robin group and just do a little fade out for each one. Make sure there's no junk left over that's going to leave a weird ending. Great. All right, the next thing to do is just to render this out. So what I'm going to do is select all these tracks here. I'm going to hit Control Alt R. Under Render, I want to render stems. And that is the selected tracks. So I only want to render the selected tracks that I have here. And then in Render Bounds, I want to choose Project Regions. So it's only going to render these four tracks, and it's only going to render the in and the out point of these project regions here. Now I'm going to pick a spot for these to render to. Here we go. And then I'm going to change the name of this. I'm going to call this Tub Hit. And then I'm going to put in some information to help me keep track and help contact auto map these samples for me. I'm going to put C2 underscore C2 underscore D2. And then in contact, I'm going to use these three values to set the root note, the low key, and the high key for this sample group. And that'll all make sense in a minute when we jump inside of contact. Then I'm going to hit underscore. I'm going to come over here to wildcards and select track. That's going to give me the track name, which in contact, I'm going to use as the low and high velocity so that it auto maps that for me. I'm going to hit underscore again, and then I'm going to choose region. And this is going to give me the region names, which I named RR1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm going to leave it set to 44.1 in 16-bit wave, because that's totally fine for this project. I'm going to change channels to mono, and then I'm going to hit render 20 files. And if I navigate to where those files got rendered to, I can see all my file names are looking fantastic, and I'm ready to jump into Contact. So I have Contact open here, and I have my files loaded up. Up here in the Files tab, I've browsed to the folder where I have saved and rendered out all of the samples. So now it's time to start building this instrument. I'm going to come up here to File and Create New Instrument. I'm going to click on this wrench here and jump into the Editing Mode. I'm going to turn off the keyboard just to get a little bit more space to work with. There's a couple of different ways we can get these samples into this new instrument. I'm just going to jump right over to the mapping editor here. And I'm going to grab a bunch of these samples and just bring them right in. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my list here, starting with the yellow screw bin. And I'm just going to scroll up and grab a couple of these samples. And when you bring them in, if you're towards the top of this mapping editor, you can see it creates zones that are very large. And as you put your mouse down towards the bottom of the mapping editor, it creates zones that are much smaller. These are zones that are in increments of half steps. And if you hover over an individual key, it'll put all of these samples, or try to, on a single key. What I'm going to do is just put them right about here. Now, the reason why I didn't do all of the samples is because I rendered out about 330 samples. And if I bring all of them in, contact kind of freaks out and it doesn't work quite right. So I do it in a couple of batches and that works out okay. I'm going to click up here to the group editor so you can see what's going on with the groups. And as you can see, all of these samples were loaded into one group. And in contact, what I want to have happen is I want multiple groups so that I can set contact to basically cycle the groups and create a round robin for me. And I can do that automatically. With all of the samples selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose auto map setup. And now contact is going to look at the file structure and it's going to recognize these things called tokens or what contact calls tokens. And you can see it's identified E6, E6, F6, 0, 127, and RR5. And then down here, we have a drop-down list of what we want to assign these tokens to. 
So I'm going to leave these set up exactly like they are. I have the first value here, E6, set to the sample root. The next one is make low key, make high key, make minimum velocity, make max velocity, and make group name. And so when I apply this, you're going to see something happened, but it didn't auto map all of the samples. You can see instead of creating five groups, which is how I have these organized, it only created two groups. And that's because it kind of, it goes a little bit slow until all of the groups are created. So if I select all the samples, I right click on them, I go to auto map functions, auto map selected, you can see it's going to create more groups. It's still not going to do all of them. I'm going to do that one more time, select all of the samples, auto map selected. And now you can see one, two, three, four, five. I have no idea why they're not in order, but there it is. I'm going to select all the samples one more time, auto map functions, auto map selected. And now because all of the groups have been created, it'll auto map the rest of these samples. I'm going to go ahead and turn tracking off because I don't want contact to pitch stretch any of these samples that I'm importing here. And so now you can see that contact has broken these samples up and it's put all of the samples in terms of velocity layer in the right spots. You can see this guy right here is 96 to 127 and that's living right here on the top of the velocity. So if I hit this key here, everything is working the right way. So now I'm going to select the next batch of samples starting with this tub hit right here. And I'm going to bring those in. Doesn't really matter that these are overlapping because as long as they're selected, I'm going to right click on them, go to auto map functions and choose auto map selected. And it's going to automatically map all of these out and place them right in the correct spots. I'm going to do the next group of samples here the same way. And just like that, the entire instrument has been created. It put all of my samples in the right key ranges and it mapped out where the velocities go and it put all of the samples into their own groups. If I uncheck edit all groups here and select selected groups only, you can see that there's nothing in group one, which is the initial group that's created when I imported the samples. If I click on round robin one, you can see that the samples in round robin one are right in here. If I go to round robin five, they all have the same exact number of samples. You don't see anything shifting around, but each one of these contains a different variation, which is exactly what I want. So I can go back to group one here since I have all of the samples in and I can just delete this group. Now the problem is if I play these, you can see all of the groups are lighting up and that's because it's playing all of these groups. And I don't want that. What I want to have happen is I want to have a round robin effect. And there's a way to do that right inside of contact. It's quite easy. If I check edit all groups and then I come down right here to group starts, I'm going to select cycle round robin. Now there's also an option to cycle random, but the problem with this is that I don't really like the random effect because sometimes it'll play the same group two or three or maybe even four times in a row. And that's not what I want to happen. So I prefer to just leave it on cycle round robin, which basically goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And that gives me enough variation to kind of throw off my ear. So I don't really hear the samples repeating. Now there are more advanced techniques where you can load a script, which will give this a kind of combination of round robin and randomness where it'll play in a random way, but it won't repeat the same samples two times in a row. That's pretty easy to do, but for right now, I'm going to select cycle round robin. The next thing I need to do is uncheck edit all groups. And then with round robin one selected, I want to make sure that the position in the round robin chain is set to one. If I jump to two, I'm going to need to change this value to two and the same thing with three and the same thing with four and the same thing with five. Now, when I go and play one of these instruments, you'll see it will cycle through. 
one, two, three, four, five. It automatically cycles through the round robins. So there's a few more things that I need to address here. And to make this a little bit easier to hear, I'm going to throw on some effects. So I'm going to grab a three band EQ. I'm just going to give this a little bit of low juice here. Something like this. Maybe give it a little high boost somewhere in this neighborhood, just a little bit. Then I'm going to throw on a compressor. And then I'm actually going to stack another compressor on top of this and just give it some really light compression here. Just to give these a little bit more punch. Then I'm also going to add a limiter. I'm going to turn up the volume here, the master volume. And now one of the issues here is that the default value for loading in samples is not one shot mode, which means if I play one of these longer samples and I release the key before the sample is done, the sample gets chopped off. Now, if I pull up the wave editor here, in order for me to get these to play in one shot mode, what I have to do is come down here and click this little power button and then change the loop mode to one shot. And I have to do that for all of these samples. And that is a really tedious process when you have hundreds of samples. I have 330 samples in here. So a really easy workaround is if I come down here to the volume ADSR, what I can do is just change the release value to something quite long. But in order for that to work, I need to come up here and choose edit all groups. So now I'll come down here. And now I'm releasing the key quite quickly, but I still get the whole sample to play. And that's exactly what I want. So now I have this set where all of the samples are playing and you can hear, I'll give you a quick demo of what some of these sound like. So there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Now, one thing that I like to do is add a convolution reverb here, and I'm going to pull up maybe concert hall B, something like this. And then I'm going to turn the low pass down to cut out some of the high frequency stuff from this reverb. And that's really going to give these samples a lot of juice, a lot of impact and weight. Now, I'm going to adjust how much is going to the convolution reverb. I'm going to click sends over here under instrument insert effects. And I'm just going to turn this down just a little bit. Now, the one thing that you will see is that because I've set the release time so high, it's set to 25 seconds, which is pretty high. I could probably turn that down to like six seconds. You will see when you play several notes, even with the same instrument, that all of these groups will light up. And that's because it's still hanging on to that release time there for that six seconds. But it is still doing that round robin. If I play through them slow, it's still working for me. So everything is set pretty nicely. 
Now, if I needed to adjust any of these samples here, like say this guy right here, if this was a little bit too loud, what I could do is turn edit all groups on and then select this zone here and then just take the volume and juice it down a little bit. Same thing with this guy, that might be a hair too loud compared to the other samples. So I might turn that down. You have to be careful. If you don't have all of the zones selected, you'll see it'll only change the volume for one of the groups. So that's why I have those little question marks there. And actually, I don't even think I need edit all groups on as long as I just select if it turns this really saturated color of yellow, I know that I have all of the groups selected where if it's just this lighter shade of yellow, only one of the groups is selected. So by drawing a selection, I grab all of the groups, but if I just click on this, I only have one of the groups selected. And lastly, you may want to make an adjustment to the way that contact is scaling the volume. So for example, on some of these, if you can see the velocity input is really low. So I'm hitting a pretty quiet key on my keyboard. And now if I really lay into it, not a lot of difference there. So if I come down here and I click the mod tab under velocity, what I can do is scooch this up. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I have all of the groups selected. So I'll just click edit all groups. And then if I push this up a little bit more and I play really quietly, Now I have a little bit of dynamic range. Now I can also come in here and change some of the panning for some of these samples as well. So maybe I take this guy here and I pull that over to the left. Sometimes selecting these middle groups is a little tricky. So I may slide these guys over so I can select these and then push these guys over to the right and I'll just take these and put them back. And now I have a little bit of stereo imaging here, which sounds pretty cool. And finally, once I have everything set, once I have all of my effects adjusted, I want to save my instrument. So I'm going to come up here and name this. And then I'll go to file, save instrument. I'll navigate to my folder here and I have patches and samples selected and that will save the patch and it'll take all the samples and put this in this location. And I have an SSD set up where I put all of my sample libraries. So it's much faster loading. So I'm going to click save. It's going to save all those samples. And now if I jump over here to my files tab on my SSD drive under sample libraries under Bodhi. Right here, I have Bodhi impact hits. So I can get rid of this guy here. I don't need to save my changes. And I can pull this guy in. And it's all loaded up for me. I had a lot of fun putting this together. And I have a really cool sample library to add to my other sample libraries. And I created sounds that were uniquely mine. No one else has these sounds, which I think is pretty cool. Thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Again, my name is Dave Bodie for Tuts Plus, and I'll see you around.